Sing me a song of a last that is gone. Say, could that last be I? Mary of soul, she sailed on a day over the sea to sky. Mole was a stand, rum on the port, egg on the starboard bow. Alvine here. Hey, hey bear. Say hello to Teddy Bear. This is my sister's dog. Don't eat them. This is my sister's dog. <laughs> I'm babysitting him for the week, so he's here to say hi. Today, obviously, I'm showing you rocks. He likes to eat rocks too, so I have to watch you, don't we? Yes, yes. He hasn't been getting enough attention. So he'll help me do the video today, I guess. <laughs> So, I wanted to talk about stones and the magic of stones. I have incense burning too, so there's like whew, an awful lot of smoke here. Look how big my hand is. Oh my god. Okay. The magic of stones. So, stones are something that I use a lot in my practice. I think a lot of people, you know, use crystals, um, you know, which I would <laughs> which I would consider to be a kind of stone. Um, obviously, they have a different structure so that's kind of another reason why we hold them as being sacred hello i know i know uh but yeah stones are something that i use quite a bit in my practice so i wanted to kind of talk a little bit about how i do that and why and that sort of thing so my stone obsession uh started i don't know some years ago i mean i always loved them when i was little i always thought stones were cool but I never really <laughs> collected them overly much. He's a beautiful boy, I know. Um, up until kind of fairly recently, um, these are just kind of a few of the stones that I have around the house. I was kind of walking around collecting for the video going, ooh, this one, ooh, this one. <laughs> so, stop it. Excuse me. Excuse me, Bear. Oh, nothing. All right. Um, yeah, so I haven't collected all of them, but these are kind of, you know, it's a good show of what I've got. Um, so not all of them I use in my practice. I have a lot of them just kind of sitting around. It was interesting because I started collecting them uh, a lot, probably about a year ago and onwards from that time. And then I realized that I think the message I was really receiving from Mama Earth was about grounding and my need to ground. And once I kind of realized that, um, I, you know, I saw the absolute truth in that and, um, and really focused on my grounding practice from that time onwards and a lot changed in my life and for the better. So that was definitely a message that I have heard loud and clear, don't eat that please, loud and clear and have been following, uh, to my benefit. So specifically in my practice, there's a few of these that I use a lot. This one you guys will have seen before. I don't know how well you can see the focus on that. This is my spider stone. So I use it to connect with spider and I use spider medicine to help me in my creativity to write and also in weaving the life that I desire to live. So it's something that I always have sitting around me and I haven't used this one in any specific spell work, but it is something that sits around me and it is in and of itself, I suppose, a little spell. You know, every time I pick it up, I connect to that energy and go forth and weave. <laughs> I've got this one as well, you guys will have seen. This is my goddess stone. So I found this one. Uh, in a park some time ago and uh, I, I felt the strongest pull as soon as I saw it and so I decided to bring it home with me and it has a very primal feminine energy for me and I meditate with that one I really like to sit and meditate with this one I don't do it that often but every time I do I receive really strong messages. These stones are a mixture of, um, in terms of where I found them, so most of them I found on beaches, some of them I found on mountains, like this one here, 
This one, I climbed a mountain with my husband and my son, and the mountain actually looked a lot like this. I thought it was really funny. Um, you can see kind of the the levels, the different platforms, and on top there's just this rock here. It was Mount Oberon uh, at Wilson's Promontory, for any of you who have visited that place, uh, down in Victoria here. And um, it was a, a beautiful mountain, it was a real feat to get up at two with <laughs> with my five-year-old son. So anyway, we managed to do that and I brought that home because I just thought it was really cool. Uh, it just reminded me of doing that together. And where else have I found them? Um, riverbeds. Uh, and different parks and things like that. A few of them have been given to me. This one was given to me by my mama and this is like a real like sandstone kind of feeling. Well, I don't think it's sandstone but you know very rough and this one I really treasure because my mum doesn't know about how I practice and how I view spirituality. Um, so it was really nice to kind of get something from her that I could kind of bring into that space. So that one's special, and this one I've I got from my husband. This one's cool because it's got like green in it. It's just cool. Well, this one I also found on the mountain. It's like a, a heart, and it reminds me of mint chocolate because it's got green and brown in it, which I don't know if you'll be able to see on the video at all, but there you go. This one here is quite special to me. I collected it on a holiday um, with my husband and son, and to me it really represents them, my family, our small family unit. I don't know why, it just happens sometimes. Um, I don't specifically assign things to the rock, but if I feel that a kind of energy or message is coming through from them, then that's kind of what they're for. So this one represents our family. And this one's pretty as well, you won't be able to see, but it's got blue and brown through it. So I have this sitting in a sort of prominent place in the house and um, kind of use that as a focus and each time I see it I kind of say a little prayer for my family or kind of bring intention into that place. It kind of brings me back to that place of family. This one is very special to me. This is my crone stone which I've shared in other videos before. This is one that I collected and it didn't have a meaning and I brought it home and I just really liked it. It's um it's got blue through it and brown and it's just got gorgeous little flecks through it, which again, you probably can't see. <laughs> uh, and then I started meditating with it. I, I have had uh, struggles with anxiety in my life. And I think my hat's falling off. Oh, it's falling off so badly. So I've had struggles with anxiety and I was going through a stage where I really needed to find my inner strength, my inner core and really connect with that. And I began meditating with this when I needed to do so. And it ended up um, sort of morphing into crone stone. So for me, crone is a very sacred aspect of, of woman. And an energy that I connect with quite a lot. Um, and for me, she's really about that authenticity. You know, she's old, she's grey, she doesn't give a fuck. I love it. And that's what I have been really bringing into myself that kind of energy of, of being one's own self and not caring about what anyone else thinks. And I began doing spell work with this, so it was in the form of meditation, so I would kind of have a whole spell built around it and then sit with this stone. And what I would do was, because it's quite a heavy stone, focus on that being in my centre, in my core, and imagining that this stone was inside of myself and drawing strength from that and it's helped me immensely. I cannot tell you how much. I got through some really big events and things that I had a lot of trepidation about and um, yeah, sitting with this beforehand really helped me to kind of centre, be myself, draw that strength out. So this one's a very special one to me. And then you've got things as well like lodestones. So this is more in the crystal family, um, you know, people would consider that, but um, this was my first, one of my first crystals um, that I brought and I really love this guy. It's really heavy for the size that it is, but any of you who have lodestones will know that. <laughs> so that's another special one. I have also a bunch of hag stones back here, which can you see on the video? Yeah, kind of. 
This was my very first one. So I really wanted a hagstone. Hagstones are stones with a natural hole formed through them and usually that's done by water. So this one was found on my local beach. And when I found it, I was so excited because I'd looked for, I don't know, I reckon it was a few months before I found it. And I used to have it hanging on a necklace as a pendant, but the, the, I just had it on string and the string kind of broke or whatever. But, so that's a really special piece to me. And hagstones are supposed to be very protective. Um, originally they were to protect against witches. So there you go. This one looks like a shark fin or something, or a orca fin more like. I have a few of those here, but you probably can't see his little hole. And I have, I've got bowls of things, that's a sponge, a sea sponge, but I've got bowls of rocks that I sit around the place and I just love to pick them up and, oh that's another hagstone, pick them up and hold them. Um, you can create crystal grids with stones as well. And what's wonderful about that is firstly, they're obviously completely inexpensive, you can go and pick them up anywhere pretty much. Um, and they're pieces of the body of Mother Earth, so they have that kind of energy in them. They have, I mean, for everyone, every stone is different. Every stone holds a different energy, and for each person, they will hold a different energy. For me, I really connect with Mama Earth when I hold them and when I see them. It reminds me to ground, it reminds me of my Earth connection, and it reminds me of the of how small my problems really are. You know, uh, these stones will still be here after I'm gone. They have been here for who knows how long before me and seen who knows what. It just reminds me to kind of not take myself so seriously, not take life so seriously and that it's okay and that tomorrow there'll be a new day. Here I also have some lava rock, which I found on the beach, and here's another little one. These are really cool. So I don't know if you guys know, but um, when, when lava cools, um, it can turn into obsidian glass or it can turn into lava rock like this. So this to me feels quite sacred and has a real fire energy about it, um, which is why I love it. I've told you guys before, I'm a fire sign. I'm like an intense fire sign. I have Leo, sun and moon, and I was born in the year of the dragon. So there's a whole lot of fire about me, I can tell you that right now. Mixed with uh, some lovely Cancerian water, of course. So, you know, I'm nice. <laughs> uh, what else do I have to show you? I think that's pretty much it uh, in terms of that. So they can be used in spellcraft, um, in making crystal grids, of course. Um, they can be a nice focal point for a spell. You know, maybe you could uh, choose one to kind of represent you in a spell. I do that with this one sometimes, uh, just because it has become so personal to me and it's my inner space. You know, I imagine it being my inner space. So I do that with that one sometimes. They're really good for meditation, very good for grounding in your space. If you find, if you find that you're collecting a lot of stones, uh, a lot of earth kind of uh, representations of earth elements, uh, maybe your need for grounding is something that you could look at and what that kind of means to you. So I think grounding Grounding can be different for everybody. For me, it's really about connecting with earth and getting my roots sunk deep and kind of being on this plane. This hat, my God, you guys, it's just not gonna stay on. You probably can't really see it anyway, so it's fine. <laughs> I'm using it to cover up my regrowth. My regrowth's really bad. I'm gonna be dyeing my hair in the next few days again. So watch this space. We may have a giant hair disaster on our hands, which is always fun if it's not you. <laughs> so stones are also really great to connect with the ancient ones, to connect with ancestors or those who have passed or even primal earth energies. Um, obviously they've been around, like I said, a lot longer than us. So who knows what they've seen? Who knows who touched them? Who knows if they've ever been touched before, perhaps you're the first. And they can hold really powerful messages. Um, I discovered that 
when I really started to choose stones to sit with and meditate with and spend time with, they have incredible wisdom held within them. So this has been my little chat on stones. I hope you enjoyed it and let me know if you guys collect stones, if you have some stones, show them off, they're so fun. <laughs> I know that most people don't kind of do um, videos on stones, they do videos on crystals and things like that and crystals are wonderful because they're sparkly and pretty but I mean some of the patterns that you can find in stones are incredible. Can you see this one? This is my alligator stone. They are very, very cool. I wish you all much love and many blessings, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.